my last video I showed how well boxed an item I'd bought off eBay was, but I didn't say what the item was. I uh, left you guessing, and I'm sure you were able to guess what it was, and uh, it was this. It is of course a ferroresonant transformer. Now we saw a ferroresonant transformer in the IBM 5120 that I'm repairing, but I kind of glossed over what it was, um, and you'll probably see why that is in the next couple of videos. Because what I'm going to do is, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate um, what this does. And in the next video, I'll go through the theory behind its operation, how it works, its advantages and disadvantages. But before I show this working, I thought I'd just give a quick demonstration as to what the problem is that this is intended to resolve. It does have a very specific purpose in terms of its applications. Uh, but it's easier really to uh, demonstrate what that is rather than just try to describe it. So I'll get this out of the way and I'll get something else on the bench that will make it a bit easier to explain uh, what we are trying to resolve uh, when using a ferroresonance system. If you've been watching my channel then you will most likely recognise this. It is of course the Ryden power supply I made with the linear back end. And uh, when I made this, I wound two toroidal transformers and wired them together to give a reasonably high performance linear back end for my ride and supply. And I demonstrated this working. Now, one of the issues in designing this, and I'm sure you've come across the same thing if you've tried to do a design like this, is that with the Ryden system, for example, the maximum input voltage is 70 volts. If you put more than 70 volts into the controller, it will shut down with an other voltage protection. However, if the input is too low, then you'll find that because of the voltage sag on the supply as the load increases, then you might not be able to achieve the full output voltage, which is meant to be 60 volts. And because you have an inherent voltage drop within um, the controller, maybe 1, 2 or 3 volts depending on the load, uh, then really you need at least 61, 62 volts uh, going into the controller in order to achieve the full output. So when I designed this, you take into account the mains voltage, the drop in the rectifier, um, the um, smoothing, all the different aspects of the design come together and you aim to achieve an under load voltage range that matches your application. Now of course it's complicated by the fact that depending on the gauge of wire that you use for your transformer you're going to get um, voltage drop because of the resistance of the windings as the current increases. Um, lots of different things play into this and it means that designing um, a linear supply like this can be quite tricky. And as I say, if you've actually tried it, then you'll understand what I mean, that it can be very complicated getting exactly the right voltage, uh, especially because this is such a, a high output supply that we're going from no load at all right up to 360 watts, which is obviously quite a, a range for a non-regulated supply. So what I was aiming for was somewhere between 69 and 70 volts input to the rider controller at my local mains voltage and as you can see that's what I've got. I've got just over 69 volts and that's exactly what I was aiming for. Now what I'm going to do now is start applying a load to the output of the supply and we'll see um, the voltage going into the ride and controller start to drop. So this um, voltage on the meter is um, displaying the voltage across the capacitor bank that's feeding the ride and controller. So I'll turn on the um, electronic load. It's currently set to a resistance of 100 ohms. So I'll turn that on, turn the supply on, and you can see that we're getting about 25 watts. Um, but if you look at the voltage on the uh, meter, then it's already dropped quite significantly. Now you're always going to get an initial drop uh, of that's quite significant. So what we'll do to keep the test sensible is we'll go from a nominal load of 25 watts and then we'll start to increase it while keeping an eye on the drop that we observe on the test meter. So I've got the power supply set to 50 volts, current limits at 6.1 amps. So I'll start to reduce the resistance on the load. So 
This is set to constant resistance. It's 100 ohms at the moment. We'll go down to 90 ohms. But if we keep an eye on the uh, test meter, so we're up to 30 watts and the voltage has dropped slightly. We'll go up to 50 watts or thereabouts and you can see we've now dropped by well over a volt. We'll go up to 100 watts. And you can see we've now dropped by uh, over 2 volts. And we'll keep going up. So that's 100 watts. We'll go up to 150 watts. And we've now dropped another half a volt. And I'll keep going up to 200. And you can see we've now dropped by 5 volts uh, from our nominal starting um, uh, power of 25 watts. So I'll keep going up. We'll go up to 250 watts. And you can see we dropped another half a volt. And I'll go right up to 300 watts. I can't go any higher than this because I want to get the supply set to uh, 50 volts. You'll see why that is later on. So around 300 watts or just under 300 watts, we've dropped by around 7 volts. So that's the voltage going from the linear supply uh, into the ride and controller and it's dropped by uh, around 7 volts since uh, we started applying load. So if we keep an eye on the meter, I'll turn the load off and you'll see this voltage will rise again. And as you can see, we've gone up by uh, 8 volts, but this was um, no load. Uh, from full load to no load. So I'll turn the load back on and as you can see the voltage has dropped right down again. So I'll start to increase the resistance on the electronic load and we'll see this start to go up again as the uh, indicated power uh, starts to drop. So we're now under 200 watts and we're back up near 63 volts. I'll keep going down with the power Okay, we're down near 100 watts and we're back up to 65 volts. So you can see there's a huge change in the voltage coming from the linear supply as the load varies. And that's a big problem. It can be a, a really big problem for uh, certain types of equipment. Specifically computers don't like uh, this sort of uh, change in voltage. But there is a, a secondary problem that we have here as well. So I'll leave the load turned on. And what I'll start to do is vary the mains input voltage. Now the mains input uh, voltage does vary a lot uh, over time. So even in a single location it can vary by 10 volts or more. Uh, and also uh, in different parts of the country you'll find that the voltage varies as well. So I'll start to change the voltage. I'll reduce this and if we keep an eye on the um, digital meter so 240 volts, I'll take it down to 230 and you can see we've gone down by several volts on the um, linear supply. So we're currently at 61 volts, I'll go down to 210 volts on the input. So that's around 210 and we're down to 55 volts. We've dropped nearly 10 volts and that again is a big problem. Without some form of feedback regulation then you do get a huge problem trying to get a sensible voltage range. And of course if you're in a part of the country or an area where the voltage is very different nominally on your mains then you'll need to take that into account when you design a linear supply like this. If I go back up to 240 volts, we're coming at 55 volts on the uh, linear supply. I'll go back to 240 volts mains. And we're up to over 64 volts. So that's nearly a 10 volt change for uh, what is just a 30 volt change in the input, which is to be expected because that's the ratio of the transformer. So it's a, also an issue um, without some form of pre-regulation or feedback regulation a linear supply uh, voltage is very problematic. So I'll get this out of the way and we'll look at how the ferroresonant transformer uh, provides a ready-made solution to this.
Okay, I have an identical setup, uh, except this time I'm using a ferroresonant transformer. So what we have is the transformer itself, um, a rectifier, smoothing capacitor, and then this big uh, block down here is the resonant capacitor. I'll explain what this uh, is for in the next video, but um, there is no feedback regulation in this system. It is just purely a transformer, a rectifier, and a smoothing capacitor. I've got the load connected to the DC um, output. So what I'll do now is the exact same test I did before. We've started with the same load. It's about the same output voltage, which is why I selected 50 volts on the ride and supply. Um, I'll power up the ferroresonant transformer. The meter is monitoring the AC output of the transformer. So it gives us the, um, if you like, the, the range of voltages that we're seeing on the transformer as the load and the mains voltage varies. So just bear that in mind, what we're looking at here is not the DC voltage, this is the AC um, coming out of the, uh, the transformer. Also bear in mind this is a true RMS reading meter and that's quite important and I'll explain why that is in the next video as well. Okay, so I'll turn the mains on. Um, the transformer is set to 240 volts, so I'll switch this on. And what you can see is we're getting around 50 volts coming out of the um, transformer, um, DC of course, and this is into a 100 ohm load. So it's giving us about 24 watts, about the same as we started with last time. And notice that the voltage, the AC voltage coming out of the transformer is about 45 volts. So what I'll do now is start to increase the load. And again, I'm in constant resistance here. So we'll start to go down with the resistance and that will increase the power. And we'll go up to 30. So that's a, just over 30 watts. And you can see we're at 45 volts AC, about just under 49 volts uh, DC. So we'll keep increasing the load. So I'll go up to 100 watts. Okay, we're up at 100 watts. Notice this time that the DC voltage has only dropped by about half a volt, and the uh, AC voltage has dropped by far less. Most of this drop we're seeing in the DC load is due to the rectifier rather than the transformer itself. So we'll keep going up. So currently we're at 45 volts AC, 47 and a half volts DC. Uh, we'll keep increasing the load. I'll go up to 150 watts. Notice that the AC voltage has barely changed at all. The DC voltage again has dropped a bit, but as before, that is mostly down to the rectifier. And we'll keep increasing the load. I'll go up to 200 watts. Notice we're down by um, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 volts on the AC. DC is still up near 47 volts. We'll go down further with the resistance. So up to 250 watts, but notice that the AC voltage is barely changing, and even the DC voltage through the rectifiers is only changing by a volt or so. So we're nearly at 300 watts here, so I'll go up some more, we're over 300 watts now, and we're still at 44.4 volts AC. So I'll start to go back up with resistance, keeping an eye on the AC. Notice it's, it's barely changing, it's, over the entire range it's, it's changing by only about a volt uh, if that so a huge difference between this unit and the uh, standard toroidal transformers so as you can see this has got much better self-regulation than the transformers that were fitted into the ride and supply even though toroidal transformers have relatively good self-regulation compared to the more traditional uh, laminate type transformers uh, this is still at least an order of magnitude uh, better in terms of self-regulation. So again, I'll go back from, we're currently at 60 watts, I'll go back up to 300 watts, keep an eye on the AC voltage, we're currently at 45.3, 45.4, so we'll start to increase the load, I'll go back up to 300 watts. So as you can see, the AC has dropped by about one volt over the range from 60 watts up to 300 watts. 
and if I go back up with the resistance so back down to about 60 watts and we're back to 45.4 so very consistent you can see that the uh, voltage on the AC coming out of the transformer barely varies over a huge uh, range of loads now that's part of the advantage with a ferroresonant transformer uh, it's also very good at regulating in response to changes in mains voltage so what I'll do now is start to vary the mains voltage so if we keep an eye on the uh, AC voltage I'll leave the DC load on so it's got some load on the transformer it's just under 60 watts at the moment um, but we're currently at 45.46 volts 241 volts going in on the mains I'll start to reduce the mains voltage and if you recall we dropped um, about 30 volts on the mains before and we got a 10 volt drop in the AC so I'll do the same here I'll go down to 210 volts so down to around 210 volts on the mains input and you can see that we've only dropped by about 0 0.1, 0 0.2 volts on the AC in the transformer. So extremely good self-regulation with this type of transformer. I'll go back up to uh, 240 volts input, keep an eye on the um, AC voltage coming out of the transformer. So we've gone up to nearly 250 volts on the mains and we've only uh, increased the AC output of the transformer by about 0.1 volts, 100 millivolts. So very good self-regulation and if we look at the DC voltage this time we're at 48.1 volts. Forty-eight point five volts. So you can see here that again um, extremely good self-regulation it's almost like we've got a, a electronic uh, feedback in uh, this sort of system but it's not electronic feedback um, one disadvantage with these transformers as you've probably noticed is they are quite noisy as I pointed that out uh, previously but uh, I'll turn this off now so this is the purpose of ferroresonant transformers their self-regulation is extremely good and for this reason IBM used them very extensively in the 1970s and 1980s for their larger computer equipment uh, and that's where this unit comes from it's actually out of a, uh, an old uh, IBM uh, piece of uh, computer equipment but this completely negates the need for electronic regulation there are many other advantages it has they're very good at filtering mains uh, noise out so if you got a lot of uh, noisy mains and especially back in the era when these were being used or used extensively then uh, mains born noise was uh, a real issue because the mains wasn't um, quite as developed as it is now but even today uh, the mains can be very noisy and especially with um, the increasing number of uh, electric vehicles and chargers mains voltage fluctuations and noise is again becoming a real big issue that's going to uh, come and bite us all before too much longer and uh, we may well see um, a move back to this type of technology so that's what it's for that's um, the advantage it gives um, the way that this works is uh, quite complicated which is why I didn't go into it in the previous video when I was uh, showing the repair of the 5120 um, but in the next video I will explain the principle of operation for this device it is uh, fascinating if you're into uh, electronics especially power electronics if you're trying to make your own power supplies you will find this very interesting the technology uh, is um, a bit more complex than you might imagine but it's uh, very interesting so I'll go into that in the um, next video in the meantime any questions on what I've uh, shown here then please leave a comment